Good afternoon, welcome to Run Light Gaming. We're going to be doing a video. This one will be on the game of Camelot. This one is by Z-Man Games. And in this particular game, you are playing different people that are kind of doing different bets and different camels. And it's just a camel race, um, is the game itself. And there are going to be a couple different things you're going to lay out here. Each player is going to choose one of these different players, which there are eight different ones, so this does go two to eight players. And they'll also get one of these little tiles here, which is like a, it's either an oasis or like a, a desert area. And so each player is going to take one of these, and we'll just go ahead and put it as though we're playing two players. And on these cards, you're going to have one of each of the different colored camels on it. So you should have one for the orange, the white, green, blue, and yellow. So one for each of those. And these are going to go to your hand, and you're going to keep those secret for the rest of the game. And the same thing with this player. They're going to get their tile. They're going to get five cards as well. Anything that you don't use, you can just go ahead and put it in the box, because you won't ever use it for the rest of the game. Then after that, you're going to have three tiles. And these are all going to be color coded. There will be a little bit different number in each of them. Like this has a big number of five on it. This has three. This has two. The five will be on top. The three will be next. And two will be on the bottom. And these are just to kind of show uh, what order that you took these different tiles in. So if you took it a little bit earlier, it's usually worth a little bit more. Uh, but generally, that also carries a little more risk if you're incorrect on it too. So, so these are those different tiles. And then you'll have five of these tiles. You'll have like a pyramid on it, then a little one coin on it. And these are just simply to annotate that you made a roll sometime during the game. Or this particular uh, leg. You'll have a pyramid, which there will be instructions in the box how to construct it. Because you'll have to actually go through a little bit of construction to get that designed. But once you do that, you'll then put your five dice in here. And we'll go ahead and grab one of these dice real quick. On these dice, it's a six-sided dice. It'll have two ones on it, two twos on it, two threes on it. So you have a chance of getting between a one and a three. And then you'll have one of each of these dice on it uh, for each of these candles. So we have five dice total here. And then you can just put that in the center. You'll have some coins here. You have a one coin, five coin, and you also have the first player marker. Which will be, it'll kind of look like a, I don't know, it's like a little talisman type thing. And that'll be your entire layout. Um, also, you have a little bit higher denominations of money as well. You have 10 and 20. These are little cards though. So if you get a little bit higher up in currency, you could trade these in order to get those as well. And the goal of the game itself is to get the most coins at the end of the game. So your entire objective is simply to win the most money. Now, that doesn't necessarily... And you don't actually get one of these camels. All you're simply doing is betting on one of the specific camels, and then from there, uh, you see how much money you get each round for doing so. So we're going to kind of go over different actions in the game, because you get one of four actions. Uh, one action, you can take this tile here, which will be located up there. And if you do that, at the end of the round, you're going to get a coin. But what you're going to do is actually roll a dice from here. So if I roll a dice, you basically just push on this little lever here, hold it to the, the surface of the board here, and then when you push it in, usually one dice will come out. Sometimes it's had a little trouble, but generally it'll always be one dice. So let's say this player went ahead and did that, just for example purposes. So they got a 2, so they're going to move 2. And then we can go ahead and set this dice aside because we know that the white dice has already been rolled for this turn. The second type of action you can do is you can grab one of these tiles. Now as I mentioned, there are three tiles in each of these. The highest one is, well the very top one is worth 5, if you're correct. Second place, 1, and then third place. So how these tiles work is in this big area here, uh, it'll show you that there's a camel on the top here. And that states that if this particular camel, which this is the yellow card, is in first place, you will get the five coins. 
If it is in second place, you'll get one coin. If it's in third, fourth, or fifth place, you'll lose a coin. So these could actually hurt you if you, let's say if you grab this yellow one, and when it goes to score at the end of the round, if he's all the way in the back, you're going to lose coins for these. So that is the second possible action you can do. The third possible action, you can drop your tile. And each player is going to have only one of these. You cannot lay this on the first tile, because there will be a little X mark on here. And you cannot put it on a, tile, on a space that already has something on it. So for example, I could drop it here. And this is double sided, so I can choose to either go where if they land on this tile, they'll fall back one space. Or I can put it on the oasis side where they'll move up one space. Another rule about these is you cannot put them adjacent to each other. So if I drop a tile here, they cannot drop another tile here. They have to space it out by at least one. I think a lot of that has to do too with the fact that if you could put them next to each other, as soon as you hit one, you could just chain reaction each other and then it causes issues with the game. So the rule of the game itself is to you have to at least space it out. So you can have at least one space between each of these tiles. And then the fourth action will be these two stacks here. Now on this stack, you're going to see it that it'll have a picture that looks like the first camel. And then you'll see like them celebrating this particular camel. Now what this is for is for the overall race. Who you think is going to be the first place of the overall race? And this, on this other side here, is who you think will be the last in the overall race. And these are scored at a little bit different timing because all these other things are scored after each of the five dice are rolled. These two stacks here are scored once the first camel reaches across the finish line here. So it is something that if you do it really early, you may not have a lot of information because things could change really drastically really quickly. And you'll see that really quickly once we go through some more as far as how rolls and stuff go. So we're going to go ahead and, um, yeah, so let's say if I were to drop a green camel in the winner spot and a yellow here. Now these do go face down so that way no one else knows what you actually bid on. But let's say if yellow were correct the first person to put a yellow card down in the stack is going to get eight coins. The second person with a yellow card is going to get five. And then three for the third, four, sorry, two for a sec, fourth, etc. If you are incorrect, you're going to lose a coin. So that is something to take into consideration. You could throw one card each round until you have all five cards in the same stack, but you're going to lose a lot of coins due to guessing incorrectly. So. Alright, so at this point, uh, those are the four different types of actions. And we're going to just do a really quick uh, fast forward on some things. I'm just going to grab a couple tiles here. And you can grab multiple of the same tile. Now you can only grab, do one of those actions per round, and you can only grab one tile per round. But let's say if I use my next action and grab another tile, you are able to do so. Um, so here we yellow tile here. We'll roll, 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 and let's roll. Okay. So we're just going to do like fast forward through an entire one round. So green's going to move three. Blue's going to move three. Yellow's going to move two. Orange is going to move one. Now in this particular case, how this is going to work, and actually what we're going to quickly see is that all these bits that I did, because I just kind of randomly took them without actually taking much into consideration, because I didn't really know where anything was going to move out. And as you can see, I'm already going to take a little bit of consequence as far as the game goes. And also, starting off in the game, you actually do start with three coins, which I did forget to actually give each player. Because you can lose coins in this as well. 
So each player is going to start out with their three as well. Now, at this point, we have to determine which players are first, second, third, etc. So we know that green and blue are actually on the same space. However, the camel that is all the way up top, so in this case blue, is actually going to be considered first place right now. So blue's in first, green's in second, yellow's in third, white's in fourth, orange is in fifth. Now we know with these different markers we have, because I have a white and yellow marker here, which this one's third and fourth place, and due to that, I'm going to lose a coin on each of these. However, because they also did some rolls off this side, they also were to gain three. We're going to gain three coins, so they're going to lose two, gain three. They're going to net one, so they'll gain one coin. At which point, then we drop all these tiles back on the board, and then we do the same thing for this other player. Now they bid both times on orange. Now orange is going to lose two. Well, this player is going to lose two due to the two bets here, but they also roll twice as well, so they break even. And then that is the first round. And we're going to go over a couple more things because um, these, in this game they do move a little bit differently than most games. Uh, because as you can see they're actually on each other's back. Which is going to make it to where whenever a camel that has camels on its back move, it's going to move those camels with it. And I'll kind of show you some of how that works. So in this case, orange moved three, which since he has nothing on his back, he's just going to move by himself. So one, two, three. Let's say the next player rolled. Now white moved three, but he does have yellow on his back, so what he's going to do is actually take him with him. So you go one, two, three. Now the thing is, yellow wasn't doing particularly well last round, but he's got a very good chance of possibly doing really well this round. But at the same time, green and blue still hasn't rolled yet. So these two could still move. And we also know yellow could still move. Now alternatively, green could move and land on top of yellow and white here. But then if yellow moves after that, they could move a lot further. So let's go ahead and do another roll. So yellow's going to move three. So one, two, three. So we know in this case he has a pretty good lead here. So it's fairly safe he may win this particular round. But green got a three. So one, two, three. Now if blue gets a two or a three, blue then takes the lead. And blue got a one. So it's a little bit of a different situation than normal because this is pretty much how this particular round goes. So we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And as you can see, the, it changed quite you know, dramatically, though orange was the last last time, so that's on par with pretty much what happened last round. Uh, there was a little bit of a change as far as the, the round it goes. So depending on which tiles you took, you could have earned a lot more money here if you bid on, say, yellow, as compared to, say, like, blue or green. Because um, if you would have said, say, bid on yellow, you would have made either the 5, the 3, or the 2, depending on which tile you took. If you would have bid on blue, because he's in second place, you'd gain a coin for each of these tiles. However, if you bid on green, white, or orange, you would have lost a coin. So, I mean, it, it's a little bit of a trade-off. And that is generally what they would refer to as a leg within the, uh, the game itself. Uh, but a lot of times I'll just call it a round. And each of these rounds, once these five tiles have been used, because I said, you take one of these tiles every time you roll. So once these tiles are gone, that's when you score everything else. With the exception of these piles here. And this is going to keep going on. And now we're going to go over a couple minor rules real quick. There's some things to go over. Let's actually move...
Now this one is a desert which will pull you back one space. So if you land on this, it'll move you back one space. So let's say if white got a one, you land here, then he falls back a space. Uh, whereas this one, let's say if the screen got a two, he would then move up a space. Now these do have a slightly bit different rules to them uh, as far as uh, movement goes. Let's say if orange were to roll a one. Now he's going to move forward, which means he'll actually go on top of the camel on this one. But let's say he rolled a three, whenever you slide backwards, you'll actually fall underneath the stack behind you. So let's say green and white were there. If I hit this one, so if I rolled a one, I would go on top. If I rolled a three, which means I would have went all the way over, I would lose a space, so then I would slide underneath the stack. Because sometimes that could come up to where these tiles can actually be used to kind of push certain uh, certain camels back in order to kind of take the lead. If you like, if you're gambling on say green winning, it may help a little bit to you know try and put maybe a negative tile up here, or perhaps if you're bidding on orange, and let's say this tile wasn't here. This guarantees that orange is going to win between those three. Because let's say if I rolled a one, I'm going to go on top. If I rolled a two, I go on top. If I roll a three, I pass it. So sometimes you can use these tiles for good or bad. Now, let's say it were something like this. If I rolled a two, I would slide under. Green still in the lead. That's really the bulk of the game of Campbell Up. I mean, um, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward because once a single camel so once a single camel runs across the finish line, you immediately then score everything. Even if you haven't rolled all the dice yet, it's gonna go through and just score immediately anything that has it, you know, that it where it's at right now. So in this case, like green would be first, yellow is second, third is white, fourth is orange, fifth is blue. And mostly where that's going to matter is the you'll have some of these tiles probably by then, but there's also these cards here. So you kind of get some really big bonuses if you're correct here. So let's say if you bid on green on this stack here because you thought green was going to win, At the end of the game, you're going to flip these over and determine who do you think won. So let's say this person here was the first one to put green, they're going to get eight coins. This one put a white card, they're going to lose one, but then they put a green card afterward, so they'll get five in addition. So they'll net four for this player here. So as I said, you can have multiple in there, but you will lose coins if you're incorrect. So it's another thing to kind of be cautious on. Uh, sometimes dropping a lot of those on there. Uh, but that is pretty much the game of Camelot. Um, so we will be doing some more uh, how to play videos. You should see one next week as well. Uh, we will be doing more reviews in the future. And with these reviews, I'm going to try to keep them five minutes or less is the ideal. And then usually those will be linked into videos of like these of how to actually play them. But I want to keep the reviews very... Uh, straightforward and quickly done. So that way if you just want a really quick run through of some general mechanics and some ideas of the game itself, uh, it'll be in that video. Whereas if you want to see how the actual entire game is played, you can kind of watch the longer video and it'll go over specific details like this one does of how the game itself plays and different ways of setting up and things of that sort. Uh, so I do hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, so thank you for watching Run Light Gaming, and you have a good day.